Paul from High Tech Legion, CES 2015. We're here with Cooler Master, and we have Kevin Casper here. Hello. Kevin's going to go over a little bit of what the direction Cooler Master is going to be taking over the course of this next year. Some changes are on their way, and he's going to explain what those changes are going to be about and why they're doing it. All right. So, right, so basically, Cooler Master, we have a lot of products, a whole ton of them all over the place, a lot of cooling, a lot of cases, a bunch of peripherals, all that. What we've done this year is we've broken down all of our product lines into some very clear, concise, what we call a product portfolio for you guys, for you guys, for us guys, for anyone to understand on when we release a product, you know what it's for and who it's for, you know, where, how much you're actually going to be spending for this or what you're actually using it for. And so we've broken down all of our product lines, showing examples of these different product tiers. Um, all the product tiers that we have are broken down into three major segments of essentials, which is basically the bare bones basic. You need to get the computer working, that's the essentials tier. The uh, mainstream, which is pretty much what everybody buys, as it's called, the mainstream. It's what people are looking for, it's what people wanting to buy. Um, and then on, above that is the performance tier. The performance tier offers um, more, like more expansion. So either bigger specs, whether it's like for the cases, like bigger motherboards, um, but also all performance products have some kind of unique feature. And so that's our key to find of the performance level. Okay. And so like for example here, as we panned the camera earlier, we're showing with the essential line, but we talk about the half 912. Extremely popular case, actually one of our best selling cases of all time. Um, it's a lot of people are very familiar with it. It's in that 40 to 70 range, depending on when and where you bought it, depending on your location and region and whatnot. Um, but it's a very relatively basic case. It is ATX, it has fans, it fits, it works. It's a great quality, simple build. Then you step up to the mainstream, and in the mainstream, our example here is the Silencio 652S, where it's got things like sound dampening panels, it has uh, radiator fitment on top for liquid cooling, um, and it has uh, removable uh, ventilation trays in the front, so for easy cleaning. Those kind of features, those typical, like more enthusiast builder features, is what you're going to find in the mainstream. And then when we move on to the performance, where I'm talking about the unique features, um, our example here is the Striker. Striker, it's a bigger case. It fits, you know, extended ATX motherboards. It has more drive bay compatibility. Like I said, the bigger specs, but the unique features. The Striker has this lovely carrying handle on top. Solid metal handle, goes around the whole chassis, and that's the unique feature because it doesn't really help it be a case. It doesn't really help it compute, but it's a really neat thing to have, and some people specifically look for that, and those kind of neat things, and so that's where the performance tier comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, and then Tower Cases also has the one extra tier because everybody knows and loves the Cosmos 2, and it's something that stands all on its own because it has absolutely everything you could possibly want and need, and then some in a case. And so that's just the Ultra Tower just for the Ultra case. But that's what we got going on, and we will go through the whole thing. Do you, so basically what we're looking at, so you're saying is, when we break it down, the way that they're kind of breaking it down is under like the 75, and, and you'll notice that at High Tech Legion, we kind of do the same thing uh, when we, we break down saying it's a mainstream or it's a basic, etc. So they're kind of almost on the same guidelines of, of, of how we classify products based on the price point. From $40 to $70, well, say $75, is going to be your basic. From $75 to about $100 to $130 is going to be your mainstream. Of course, over $130 to $200 is going to be, I guess you could say, well, not maybe classify as they say performance, we say gamer, and then after that, anything over the $200 mark is going to be your enthusiast level case, something that somebody is going to take and utilize every single part of it. 
So what they're doing is they're kind of trying to break it down for you almost the same way that High Tech Legion tries to break it down for you to kind of get a better example. Now, Kevin, do you, are you doing the same thing with other product lines? Every single product. Okay, so if we went over to fans, you're going to do yeah. the same? As Kevin was saying, they're doing this with their entire product line. So now we're going to go to the coolers. Now, I have a whole bunch of coolers up here. We have everything from air coolers to AIOs and also closed loop systems. But let's go ahead and focus on just towers for now because they're going to do the same thing with the closed loops and the AIOs. And they're going to do the same thing with maybe your low profile fans. So what we're going to talk about towers and we're going to talk about how they're going to break the prices down for you so you know where you fit into your price budget. So just like we said with the cases, the three tiers are essential, mainstream, and performance. So when we're talking about an essential air cooler, an essential air cooler is, man, my CPU cooler that came with my Intel or AMD chip stinks. I want a better one, but I don't have that much money for it. That is what the essential line is. So you want to replace your stock cooler with something that's a little bit better, whether it's for thermal performance, whether it's for noise, or just your stock cooler broke and you just need something to replace it. That is what essential tier is. So like our example for the essential tier, you have here the Hyper T4, also things like the Hyper T2, Hyper TX3, all that. They're super low cost. We're talking anywhere between ten to twenty-five dollar range. Um, depend, it all depends on what size of these essential coolers you're going for. But those are the ones just to replace those stock coolers because you know they work and they work better than the stock. When we talk about the mainstream, now especially with air coolers, everybody knows, and loves, and has always heard of the Hyper 212 Evo. Right? Correct. You've heard of the Hyper 2 Evo? Yeah. Many times. In short, the Hyper 2 Evo is a little popular. It is the definition of our mainstream. It is the bang for the buck cooler for those looking to upgrade their system and their fully performance. So the Hyper 2 Evo is that highlight, the one that everybody knows. But the other ones we have in that tier include the Hyper D92, which we released earlier this year. Um, it features two fans that go across. It's smaller than the Hyper 212 Evo for the people who can't fit the whole 212. Um, and it's, the performance is about the same. Okay. And then uh, what we also have here to highlight the mainstream, this guy looks really big. This is the Hyper 612 version 2. Uh, it's got six heat pipes, full contact on the CPU cooler. It's a pretty big looking cooler, but it's on par with some of the higher tier cooling needs, for, especially with those, a lot of those hotter AMD chips. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it is in that mainstream price range that reaches up to just about fifty bucks, so forty-five, fifty range. You'll see something this big. But that's still part of our mainstream setup. And when we talk about performance, again, I mentioned things like unique features, unique technologies. Air cooling is no different. Our highlight here is the VAGTS. We've had we've had this cooler out for a little while now, but it's highlighting that performance tier because the VAGTS not only looks really cool, you know, it's based off a car block engine design, mm -hmm. but the unique tech that it features is the vapor chamber, which is this whole uh, setup that we have on the bottom here. The vapor chamber helps dissipate the heat from the CPU, no matter where the heat source is on the CPU. Helps dissipate that so then all the heat pipes can be used effectively to help do the system. And it works really, really, really well on much hotter systems. Where on idle, you won't notice much of a difference on a vapor chamber system compared to like a Hyper 212. But when you get to those hot, super high, hot uh, wattage uh, CPUs, you won't see a temperature difference. It just won't change. Because this thing just gets better and better the hotter and hotter it goes. And that's what that performance tier is. So that's where you're talking the like seventy-five to hundred dollar cooler range. Yeah. All right. So as you can see, they're kind of streamlining things a little bit for you. They're breaking down their 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 choices for what entry level or beginner, mainstream, and enthusiast is going to be. So you have an idea. As we go around the suite, you'll see you'll notice the same thing. We probably won't look at too much because uh, right now we just they just had a couple launches prior to uh, prior to Christmas, so we really have nothing variably new. But we will be looking at something new shortly after we go through this part of the suite here. They do have another media room for it. Okay, everyone. Now we're going to take a look at something that confuses a lot of people: power supplies. How do we know? where a power supply fits in. You got 80 plus gold, you got platinum, you got titanium, you got bronze, you got silver, 
pretty soon they'll be making green, red, and purple. Well, Cooler Master has changed that, and now you'll know how they classify their power supplies. Yeah, so we've had a long history in power supplies. Um, some have been fantastic, some have been not as fantastic. And, uh, and with that, we've had a lot of different power supply series, a lot of different names and numbers and words that all apply to power supplies. So instead of this year, we've taken this whole portfolio structure and just broken down our power supply line into three simple structures. Going again, essential, mainstream, and performance. So our essential line that we're going out with is our GM line. The GM line offers 550, 650, 750 wattages, which is what the majority of the users need to okay. use. And all of the GM power supplies, they're very small, very compact, very good for mini ITX cases, but of course are more than enough to handle some of your bigger systems, mm -hmm. especially with the 750 wattage. They're also all semi-modular. Okay. So they have the 24 pin and the 8 pin, but they have the semi-modular for things like the SATA and those mm -hmm. power connectors. Um, but the entire series is semi-modular, they're all 80 plus bronze, and they're all five-year warranty. And that is our essential tier. They're, they're higher quality than some of the other cheaper power supplies you're, you'll find out there. And so the price range matches that. The price range we're looking at is about $70 to $90 for these guys, depending on the wattages. Mm -hmm. But that's because we are focused on the quality aspect okay. instead of playing against you know, all of these low price games for these things that are questionable. We don't want, we don't want you to question it. We want to make sure you get a power supply that works. Simple as that. Understood. Now the step up from the essentials is our mainstream with the VSF. If you're noting here, the VSM looks a lot like the GM. In fact, they're the exact same dimensions, uh, except the VSM features a lot more better inside tech. Um, it features 100% Japanese capacitors, uh, so it's a much higher quality circuit inside. Um, the fan is a bit better, runs at better temperatures at a uh, lower volume, and, uh, it, but it's also semi-modular, and it's 80 plus gold. Okay. So that's that step up there. Also, in for our US customers, we feature what we call the gold guarantee. On our VSM, we believe that it won't break. And if it does, we'll cover your RMA. We'll cover the shipping costs, we'll do advanced shipment. And that is all under its five-year warranty that we are guaranteeing on this for our customers here. Understood. Now we step up to the performance level, where we're talking about our primary V series. Our highlight here is our V1200 Platinum. It is an 80 plus Platinum power supply. It is fully modular, as opposed to the semi-modular. Obviously, it's 1,200 watt. Mm -hmm. uh, also features a seven-year warranty, but also features that gold guarantee as well. Um, the other V series that we have are 850 and 1,000 watt. They have been out for a while. They're currently still 80 plus gold, but we're going to be transitioning them to platinum to match the entire series. Okay. All right. The other thing that I noticed now too is for the silver. If you look at the uh, the denomination here. You have silver. It's bronze, I'm sorry. Or bron oh, br that's bronze? Yeah, it's bronze. These are guys are bronze. Well, okay, it's late. I'm, I'm <laughs> bronze. Gold. Gold. For the V. And of course, uh, the BSM. And of course, platinum. When they go platinum, you got the platinum. So now you're also getting key visual features of what classification the power supply is actually under now. So if it's platinum, you see something with a platinum V, you're going to know it's platinum. You see something with a gold, you're going to know it's gold, and you're, know, you're going to know that it's the mainstream. And then of course for the essential line, which is your entry level line, you see the bronze, it's going to be bronze.